Okay, welcome back to part two of uh, our tutorial of how to get started as an indie developer. Um, in today's video, we're actually going to make our player. So the first thing we're going to do is delete the label. We don't need that anymore. And the next part we're going to do is we're going to make a new node, and this node will be our player. So I want you to th I want to try to make this video a bit more helpful in the means of like learning. So I want you guys to actually, I'll give you, I want you to pause the video, look, I want you to go through this. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. I want you to go through the nodes. I'll actually give you a hint. It's in the node TD and kind of look at what we're going to be using in here. So there's a lot of things that are useful and there's some things that we're going to be using and some things that we're not going to be using. So pause the video, look through it, whatever. Okay. Hopefully you unpause the video now. Um, I'm going to be giving uh, a hint. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be making, and this is very common, usually um, we use, if I just search up uh, physics, physics, there we go. Um, we go to node 2D, uh, collision physics objects or physics bodies. So yeah, node 2D, collision object, physics body, there we go. So we have kinematic body, rigid body, and static body. These are also all in 2D, by the way, they say 2D, 2D, 2D. Um, basically, static body is something that doesn't move. Rigid is something that can move, but it's controlled by the engine. Kinematic is just a moving object or a moving body. So hopefully you can take a guess. This is what we're gonna be using. You can even see the little player there. The kinematic body is going to be the main scene of our player. So I'm gonna rename this to player. And then I'm going to save it in the main scene or main folder. Now you can read the error code and it says node configuration warning. This node has no shape, so it cannot collide or interact with any objects. Consider adding a collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D as a child. So this is a way to figure out that, wow, we need a collision shape. So we're going to be using collision shape 2D, not collision polygon, but collision shape. And then if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the shape on the top right, we can select a capsule. We'll select capsule for now. Um, doesn't matter too much. You can kind of play around with the other ones, but you can kind of, you should try to just do like circle, capsule, or maybe rectangle. Uh, rectangle can also be a box, so you can reshape it. Um, and yeah, so for now, okay. So let's say I wanted my character to be this guy. I can just drag it in and that's fine, right? So over here, we see the icon. It says um, on the top right, it says Sprite. So this is a Sprite node that we've added to our player. And now let's, add, let's actually get to animation in a bit. Let's actually make it move. So if I make a uh, script, you can see the built-in script function is off. Uh, if we turn it on, it'll say, Built-in scripts have some limitations and can be edited using an external editor. I will tell you, um, for something like player, we want it to be a non-built-in script. So we're going to create this as a non-built-in script, and it's going to be saved to our main folder. The reason being is if you click Control Shift F, this is how you find anything in all your files. So if I wanted to find out when I was changing scenes, I can search up Change, and on the bottom, it'll tell me in the main menu.gd, I'm changing scenes. So I can click it and bam. However, you cannot do this if it is a built-in uh, script. So you, usually it's not the best idea to make it a built-in script. Okay, let's move on. Let's make our player move. Okay, I kind of made a mistake last video. I don't want this to be a full-on me coding and then you follow along. I want you to kind of figure out how to do this at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually learn together, essentially. So last video I ended with telling you Google is your best friend. So we're going to use Google. So what we're going to do is we're going to search up player movement in Godot. Or you could also see character movement. I saw a character movement down there. And you can look at the documents. The documents are provided by Godot. So you can literally copy this and there's no problem. So it's it's there for everyone. So there's a lot of stuff here. Obviously, I've never looked through it. Usually, I'll just search up through Google and then it'll give me the thing. You can also, obviously, you'll get like 
um, YouTube videos from GDQuest, etc. So there's a lot of stuff. There's also kidscancode.org. This guy is really good. Um, but yeah, so now if I go back to the uh, documents, I'm going to scroll down. It's explaining a bunch of stuff about, um, what do you call it, uh, buttons and stuff. Uh, uh, we won't do that. Actually, yes, we will. Sure. I'll explain it right now. Uh, if we go to project in our project settings, project settings, and then we click input map, we'll see a bunch of things. So we have UI up, UI down, etc. So there's a bunch of stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our own. So if I have an action that says right, I'm going to add it. I'm going to say up, I'm going to add, down, add, and then left. Ooh, none of them are capitalized. I'm going to leave them as non-capitalized. So now I, what I can do is I can add actions to these. To do that, I'm going to click the button, the plus button, physical key, and then on the right, I'm going to do D, and then up, physical key, I'm going to do W, down, physical key, I'm going to do S, left, I'm going to do A. You can also do this, I believe, except we want left for that. Yeah, sure, we can do this as well. Um, we can also do, we'll do key, sorry. Keep it consistent, right, key, right. All right, so now we have um, right, up, down, left. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the documents. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and we can see the kinematic body 2D. This is the body that we're using. And you can copy paste it. I would honestly recommend when you're starting not to copy paste things. So I'm actually not gonna do that either. Um, I'm going to write it out. So what's happening here? Let's actually, I'm going to copy the function. So in our, it's physics, okay. I'm going to erase everything. I'm going to say function physics process. We're going to call this function that's happening. And I want to make that function. Um, and I'm going to do pass for now. So I'm going to explain what's happening first before we get into copying code. Um, so basically physics process is a process that happens every like hundred, one sixtieth of a second or something like that. It happens a lot in Godot. So the, the Godot engine calls this function every like 60, 60 times a second or something. I, I'm not really sure about the number. You can look it up, but it calls it a lot. So if I were to print something, yeah. And then live test, it'll start printing a bunch of it. So what I did is I click this guy. This will play the scene that I currently have selected. So if I click it, it'll launch the player scene. Um, but yeah, so what we want to do is we want to move and get input every time it, this function is called, right? So first, let's actually do this as well. So what we have here is we have the speed. So export int variable speed. So at, when you start, you can honestly just do variable speed and then set it. However, export int, integer meaning integer. So it's a whole number, so it can't be 2.0 or whatever. It has to be like 200 or 100 or 50. It can't be a point something. So that's a float. A float is point something, but integer is a whole number. Export will export this number into our 2D scene. So now we can see the script variable, it says speed. This is pretty cool because now I can edit it to be 100, right? And it'll launch a speed as 100. So we'll test that later, but for now, that's what it does. And we also have velocity equal vector two. Um, this is just minus uh, one and then one. So like one, one like this so that's our velocity for the 2d plane essentially because we're going to be moving down and up along the x and y axis right so that's going to be our velocity essentially and now what we're going to do is get input so to do that we're going to set the velocity to velocity vector 2 and we're also going to check if input dot get 
yeah, not get is action just pressed. Um, you can see a bunch of them. Um, we want just pressed. He uses pressed. We'll do that. We'll do pressed too. Why not? So there's a little bit of difference. Um, just pressed meaning like it'll only call once, whereas pressed will be like I'm holding it versus released. We also had released. You saw that. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to do down. And then we want to do something when we click down, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to do this one. I'm going to copy that. Velocity dot y plus equals one. So what does this mean? Well, on my 2D scene, if I click down, I want to go down. I want to go downwards this way. I want my player to start doing this, right? And then a good way to kind of not only visualize this and see this is if I go to transform, we have the position x and y, right? So we can see that y is zero right now. But if I start clicking, moving it down, it's going to start moving upwards. It's going to start adding to it, right? So we want to go downwards this way, right? Now, if I want to go up, I want you to take a guess. What are we going to do? We're going to move it up, but it's going to start minusing basically or going in the negatives, right? So I want you to try to think about what, are we, what if I did this, and I'll just copy all of it. And I want to go up now. What am I going to change here to make it go up? Not down, but up, right? So look at this, the Y axis, and think about it. So I'll give you the solution now. It's minus, right? Because we wanted the Y to go minus down. So now I want you to pause the video and um, do right, left, up, down, everything. So I'm doing them as well. Hopefully you, unpa you pause and then unpause, whatever. Um, but yeah, so now let's look at this. Let's actually test it as well. So if I go here and I start moving the x-axis positively, it's going to start moving to the right, right? So now I go to my script, I go to right, and I see that this is wrong. I want it to add to it. So I want to go to the right. No, on my screen is like the other way. The right, I guess. This is my right going this way. But yeah, so the left will be x and then minus. So now we should be able to test it. Yeah. If I live test, I can see our player moving very slowly. <laughs> very, very slowly, right? Because we're only adding one. So what we're going to do is, ah, this is some, something we missed. OK. OK, let's try again. There we go. Now our player is moving properly. Now we have eight directional movements. So we have up, down, right, left, and we also have this. So the reason it's eight directional and not just up, down, left, right is because we're checking it for all of them at the same time. If I were to do, I'm actually not sure this is what is going to work, but let's give it a try. Let's live test. Yeah. So this is no longer eight directional. I can only check for one button being pressed at a time, right? This is up to you. You can change it however you want. Right? This is more Pokemon style versus eight directional. Right? So I'm clicking upright at the same time, and it only gets the last one that I just clicked. It, it will only go in eight directions or four directions. Right? Um, the reason is because if this is happening, do this. Otherwise, we're going to check for this. Otherwise, if not this, we're going to check for this. Then we check for this, right? Before, what we had is it's checking for all of them at the same time, essentially, right? Um, if this is happening, do this. If this is happening, do this, whatever. So LF means else if. And there's also else you can see down there. So L else if this is happening, do this. So that's what that means. All right, so now let's, let's reset this to 0, 0, save it. Close it. In our world, we're going to add our player. And so we can just drag it in, and it's going to add it in right there. So now if I live test it, just click play. We click play. Now we have our player in the world. Awesome. We now have a fully functioning player. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was educational. Um, if not, let me know what I can do to help.
um, or if you have any advice on how to improve these videos or anything. Um, if it was, leave a thumbs up, like the video, um, share with your friends, whatever. All right, thank you for watching, guys.